I've said many times before that by far the biggest obstacle ahead of the digital health revolution is the issue of privacy. Simply put, there is no digital health without sacrificing a part of our privacy. Without our data, advanced technologies cannot improve and there is no way we can implement them in the everyday practice of medicine. And the real question is not even whether we should sacrifice part of our privacy, but how we should do it in a way that we can protect what is valuable and vulnerable. So today, let's talk about what you have to know about your privacy in the digital health era. I'm Dr. Bertalan Meshko, and this is the newest episode of The Medical Futurist. Do you even know how much health data you generate? Do you know how many hospitals, medical practices and insurance companies have access to your medical records? Can you imagine how much data your smartwatch, your smartphone or your fitness tracker generate every single day? Do you keep track of how many apps you have given permission to have access to your sensitive data, photos and contacts? Have you read the terms and conditions when you registered on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram? You have the right to protect your private information, but in practice, it couldn't be further from the truth. You are vulnerable, your sensitive data is out there, and you don't even know what it is or who gets access to it. In the old days, health data were generated solely by healthcare institutions. But now, due to technological innovations, the amount of health data on every single individual is increasing at an unprecedented rate. The digital health revolution was long overdue, but the pandemic has fastened things up. And now we are living it. Telemedicine went mainstream, governments around the world are using our smartphones for contact tracing, demand for wellness apps and fitness variables have also surged. And in this new era, you have to learn to become an empowered patient because the big data that's coming from all these tools are the new oil. Your data is valuable and dangerous at the same time and we are far from being prepared to protect it. One good example is about the pregnancy tracking app Ovia. While a helpful digital tool for millions of users, it also doubles as a monitoring tool for employers who incentivize it. The employers could also pay the app's developer to have access to de-identified aggregated data of the users. And even if the information they share is de-identified, it can be re-identified with minimal effort. Researchers in, in 2018 managed to do so with machine learning for 95% of individuals in a survey. So experts worry that privacy breaches like that could impact the career path of employees without their knowledge. The natural question that follows is what regulations are there to prevent such practices? HIPAA's privacy and security rules require healthcare organizations to adopt processes and procedures to ensure the highest degree of patient confidentiality. It makes sense. Patients desire their information to be secure and rely on you to keep it safe and confidential. In the US, the main regulation governing such issues is the HIPAA Act of 1996. It was enacted mainly to specify how to protect personally identifiable information pertaining to the healthcare industry. However, it's a law that predates the current digital health era and even after amendments, certain issues fall outside of HIPAA's protection. In the case of OVIA, even if the company stores personal and potentially individually identifiable information, such as one's menstrual cycles or sexual activity, that information involved is not labeled as health data that would be protected by HIPAA. In 2008, the GINA or the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act somewhat expanded regulations to way more precious genetic data. That's data that could potentially reveal a high chance of certain chronic diseases, and if it's not a well-protected private information, perhaps we could find ourselves in a healthcare dystopia where we could have a hard time getting insurance or finding employers who would pay for it. If you think that's an outlandish notion, just remember how pre-existing conditions are treated in the US. And even if our health data is well protected, it's not too hard to imagine a future where insurers can decide only to insure people if they get full access to their data. And unfortunately, there is not one clear solution to that problem. Traditionally, the security and privacy protection of these sensitive pieces of information rely on healthcare authorities, and it's still true. The need to not only update but also upgrade privacy policies is more urgent than ever, and it's up to them. 
But in the digital health age, where there is an insane amount of health data out there, healthcare authorities are simply not enough to oversee the whole landscape. And if policymakers don't understand Facebook, how will they regulate AI, health sensors, or your genomic data? Senator, we run ads. I see. Yet, until now, patients, the actual sources of the data, are traditionally hindered from accessing their own information. But patients must demand to have access to it, and they must be part of the privacy discussion and part of safeguarding their data. A great example is Hugo Campos, who suffers from an abnormal thickening of the heart muscle that can prove fatal. He received an implantable defibrillator, a small device that shocks the heart in the event of a dangerous arrhythmia, but when Campos asked if he could have access to the data of the device, he was refused. For the manufacturers, patients are simply not the customers. See, empowering patients is one of the core principles of digital health, and updating regulations to empower patients with their health data should go hand in hand with protecting what's important to them. But even people's perception of privacy doesn't match their protective actions. Individuals find it challenging to understand their data protection as they cannot assign a value to it in the first place. A 2020 study found that participants, even if concerned about privacy issues, would agree to compromise and sacrifice part of their privacy to benefit from the convenience of their smartphone apps. I have experienced this firsthand. Recently, I tried to clue in my nieces about the risks they take with using TikTok and how they involuntarily reveal their smartphone data. But the message um, didn't really get through. They replied that they have nothing to hide. Which reminded me of Edward Snowden's argument, that arguing that you don't care about the right to privacy because you have nothing to hide is no different than saying you don't care about free speech because you have nothing to say. We cannot forget that smartphone apps and wearable health sensors are the products of for-profit companies that might profit off individual health data without one's explicit knowledge or, or might not have security as their main concern at all. That's where individual responsibility kicks in. It's up to you to choose which wearable app or service you use to monitor your health. And you shouldn't trust many of these companies. However, if you opt out from using their products, you might also want to move to a forest and live like a monk, because in the modern world, you simply can't live without them. It's almost like you are being forced to use them. And on the top of that, even prominent companies are showing their vulnerabilities to hacks or potential hidden agendas. Will they sell your data to third parties without your consent? You might have already signed your consent unknowingly in the fine print. Recently, the San Francisco-based Strava announced a huge update to map the user activity that displays 1 billion activities of running and cycling routes by exercise enthusiasts wearing wearable fitness trackers. But soon, several experts observed that as some of those enthusiasts were active military members, the global Strava heat maps clearly started to show US military bases in Afghanistan and even CIA black sites as Strava users were jogging around those bases. But the dilemma is that it's also impossible for these variables, apps and services to provide you with medically useful results that can improve your health and disease management without accessing some of your private data. You are somehow expected to compromise when it comes to such matters and hope that the companies behind will properly handle those pieces of information. So what can you do? Once you have decided on an app or health tracker, check out what permission it asks for and decide whether you give it that permission or not. If an app or fitness tracker asks permission to access your images or contact list, ask yourself the question why it does so. Is this necessary for the service it provides? Or it just wants to sneak into your private files? But this same dilemma goes beyond how effective our variables and apps can get. Artificial intelligence will soon become an integral part of the healthcare system, from diagnosis, through drug research, to reducing alarm fatigue, the applications of the technology in the medical field only keep growing and it's immeasurable what it can do for our health. Yet, just like with our health records, for an AI to function accurately, it needs to feed on data which often come from patients themselves. 
without which it is bound to fail. And as big tech companies and startups invest heavily in AI, they will need vast amounts of data to offer accurate solutions and stay relevant. For example, Alphabet's DeepMind has been caught red-handed after London's Royal Free Hospital had failed to implement adequate data protection measures. And during a research, DeepMind had processed the data of around 1.6 million patients without consent. But a general consensus on the transparent and ethical use of clinical data for medical AI development is lacking. To take it all back to HIPAA, AI developers often overlook it as they are not considered part of the ruling and claim that they need as much data as they can get to develop accurate systems. Feeding AI to make it more effective is a compromise that cannot be overcome, so it matters how institutions and governments handle this sharing of data, how much they understand about privacy issues, and how much control they can keep over that data. I'm afraid so far they are not doing so well. So once again, what can you do? It cannot be stressed enough that you should use unique passwords for your devices and apps, especially when it relates to your health, and add an other layer of security by adding two-step verification via your smartphone. When purchasing a medical device or fitness tracker, it's a good idea to get to know the company behind it, if the company has a good track record of securing its customers' data, and whether they are HIPAA compliant and they are FDA approved and if they are in the US. Pairing a device from a respectable company with robust logins enhances the security over your data. But also, if you want to use advanced technologies in your healthcare, the reality is that some of your data will keep leaking because there is only so much that individuals can do. For now, we have to rely on the goodwill of companies and authorities to uphold the privacy and security of their health data. It's as awful and hopeless as it sounds. They will need to build on gaining the trust of patients and seeing hacks and breaches, it will take time. Tech companies will inevitably want a piece of the digital health world and there are steps they have taken themselves to earn the trust of the general public. For example, Amazon launched a healthcare service for their employees and Alphabet launched a life science company to research innovative treatments. They have to make transparent use of their data and give patients control over it. The sensitive information with which they are dealing must also be secured with updated security measures. Can you imagine this happening? One way for regulatory authorities to ensure this is by understanding the risks that come with digital health data and set frameworks to better address these risks. They should keep big tech in check demanding clear explanations as to how they use patients' data and explicitly informing them of the ways it can be used. Authorities should further clarify loopholes and grey zones from outdated regulations that still govern the digital age and upgrade these accordingly to be better prepared for privacy issues that may arise in the future. To achieve this, you might want to elect politicians who know what's going on. However, until we turn such landscape into reality, you are vulnerable, so it's important that you know and understand that your data is worth more than oil, and private companies and governments will try to get a hold over it, and the medical institutions won't easily let go of it. Whether it's your data in the hospital, your data on the technologies you use, or data you are not even aware of, analyzed by AI, it belongs to you. It is yours and it's your right to have access to it, download it and use it as you wish for your health management. What you can do is to be vigilant and empower yourself with the tools available. Because you have a choice and it's your health, your life and your data we are talking about. At The Medical Futurist, we firmly believe that patients or users of these technologies must be in a position where they can decide how much of their privacy they are willing to give up or share in exchange for a chance for a longer and healthier life. This is the social contract we have to keep a close eye on. Stay safe. If you want to read more about the future issues of digital health privacy, check out our new ebook and please subscribe below.